Because listen, our faith is not dependent on, on our circumstances. Your faithfulness to God is not dependent on your bank account. You see... Sometimes people are living for Jesus and then things go bad and they quit church. And I'm always like, that just proves you were following Jesus for the wrong reasons, man. Because look, following Jesus is not about Jesus making your life great. Following Jesus is about making much of Him. It's about bringing Him glory in your life. Now, does God, does God bless us? Absolutely. Man, does God say when you give... That you can't outgive him. Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10 says, When you're faithful in the tithe, he'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing so much on you, you can't contain it. So yeah, sure. All that. But if you give to be blessed, you're doing it for the wrong motivation, and he's not going to bless you, man. So you got to live for Jesus because he's worth it. you got to be willing to die for Jesus because he's worth it. You gotta, it's more than just a Sunday morning service, man. It's more than just going to church. Here's the deal. Blowing our mind a little bit. This is not the church. All right? If the building burns down tomorrow, the church would still be alive and well. You are the church of Jesus Christ. This is a building. This is going to burn one day, like it or not. Why? Because it's made with the hands of men. But what Christ has done inside of your heart, it is, it is an unstoppable force, man. Hey, God is unstoppable. God can do great things with people who are willing to be used by Him. They get over themselves. But man, it's so hard. Because we're so full of us. We're full of us. How can we expect a God to use us when we're full of us? Even our faith, I mean, even the culture, I mean, just turn on the TV and listen to a preacher. And they're just telling you, it's all about you being happy here, you know, and he smiles real big regardless of what you know, because preachers smile, right? Right? He's telling you what you want to hear. He's, he's tickling your ears. I mean, that's, that's actually biblical in the New Testament. Man, we, we, we hear what we want to hear, and, and, and what happens is the church becomes weak. The church becomes neutral. The church becomes meaningless in a culture that's desperately in need of light. Man, it's dark. It's hungry. It needs Jesus. It needs living water. And we're swimming in a swimming pool of it. But we're not taking it to anybody. You see, that's, that's the North American church. And I just, I'm afraid we've, we've bought into this total lie that the only thing we have to be thankful for is the stuff we have. And if we're not careful, Thursday we'll sit at the table surrounded by a bunch of turkey and stuff, and which is of God. Amen? Hallelujah. You know? Yes. But uh, we'll, we'll sit there at the table and we'll all talk about, what are you thankful for, Sally? Well, I'm just thankful for my new bicycle. It's the greatest thing I've ever, you know? What are you thankful for, Jim? Well, I'm just thankful for the roof over my head. Should we be thankful for that stuff? Yes. Yes. Should we be thankful for food? Absolutely. Yes, yes. No doubt about it. But listen, if food's taken away, if our house is burned down, if the culture turns against Christians, if, if, if everything we have is taken away and we have a, a Job moment in our life, if our job is gone, if our family turns against us, we have Jesus and He's worthy of our thanksgiving, guys. He's worth it. He's worth it. He's worthy.